So we are at the end of um, the programmed items for open session, which now I guess I'll turn it, oh, I guess I lead a discussion, council-initiated discussion. Are there any things that council would like to talk about in the open session um, before we deal with some other things and then eventually go into closed session that we haven't covered or new business items or anything? This is also the opportunity to uh, suggest to us uh, topics that you would like to have dis presented in open session in future council meetings. As a reminder, in September, there will be the presentation about the um, intramural research program from Dan Kastner and the Blue Ribbon Panel's report. Um, if there are other items that uh, you would like, issues that you would like to have us discuss, this is a time to suggest them. We have other things on the list for the fall, but, uh, but yes, if you have things, we will add it. In fact, it's already looking like it'll be a pretty busy September council meeting, which is it's a long way away, too. Okay. Okay, Mark. Uh, the next item is announcements and items of interest, and the only one to call to your attention is listed on the open session agenda with a link to the PDF for the uh, quarterly report from the American College of Medical Genetics and Genomics. And that brings us to the end of the open session, uh, unless anybody has any other item they wish to bring up. I do do the conflict of interest now. And um, you'd be surprised, but I have not memorized that. I don't have it. <laughs> and <laughs> and uh, come, I had to ask Comfort to bring it in, but I haven't gotten it yet. So <clears throat> I looked on the web to see if there was an, and there is a statement that is um, uh, used by the NIAID. So I'm going to read the NIAID statement just as a little variety. Uh -oh. <laughs> it says the same thing. The following excerpts from the NIH procedures for avoiding conflict of interest for advisory committee members uh, manual should be called to the attention of council members. The policy is that special government employees Serving as members of advisory committees must avoid real or apparent conflicts of interest. Responsible staff shall ensure that the procedures used to avoid conflicts of interest are followed, including a committee member leaving the room during reviews of applications or projects, which, to the member's knowledge, any of the following has a financial interest. The member, his or her spouse, minor child, general partner, organization which the member serves as an officer, director, trustee, general partner, or employee, or organization with which the member is seeking employment. To document that a member does not participate in the discussion or vote on an application in which there is a potential conflict, as described above, a statement to that effect is provided for the minutes, and this statement becomes a part of the meeting file. And uh, we'll ask you uh, at this point to uh, um, sign the statement that you understand that. At council meetings, when applications are reviewed in groups without discussion or identification of institutions, i.e. on block actions, all council members may be present and may participate. The vote of an individual member in such instances does not apply to applications from any institutions in which the member might be in conflict. A member who is employed by one campus of a state multi-campus institution may participate in the review of an application from another campus of the institution if the member does not hold a position with multi-campus responsibilities. A member who is employed by a private institution may participate in the review of an application from an affiliate of the private institution if the member does not hold a joint appointment with that affiliate the member does not have affiliate-wide responsibilities and the member has a conflict of interest waiver allowing the member to participate. Members are reminded that all materials furnished for review purposes and discussions held during the closed session, closed portions of the meetings are considered privileged information. The contents of those documents and the outcome of those discussions during closed sessions 
may be disclosed only by staff and only under appropriate circumstances. All communications from investigators to council members regarding actions on applications must be referred to the executive secretary of the council. Attempts by members to address questions from applicants are not within established procedures and are inappropriate. And that's what the NIAID says. Sounds good. Okay. So, Comfort, you're collecting the statements, and that's it. Okay, so I think we'll call the closed session, an open session uh, to an end, and ask uh, anybody here who is here for the open session only to please leave, and we will reconvene in about one or two minutes in closed session. I don't know who all is left here just for the open session, but they can leave. <laughs>